gonna try and fix is the speedometer not working. We have to remove this panel it looks like and this upper panel right here. I've already got the screws out of this upper panel and I can't get it out that's why we're gonna have to remove this panel. I get those back and I think there's two screws there's one there one there and then I think there's one here that goes in this way right here and I think there's another one that goes in that's behind this and this trim comes out and I think we have to pull this uh, four-way flasher switch uh, I don't think the whole switch comes out but I think that plastic um, I don't know what you call it switch cover or whatever the switch um, knob comes off I think and then um, I think the hard part is getting the speedometer cable off well, we got her down to the to the um, uh, the gauge cluster, and there's a screw there, a screw there, a screw there, and a screw there, and then it looks like some electrical connections, and I can see the back side of the speaker back in there. So I imagine if the speedometer cable gives me too much trouble, a guy could pull that speaker out and reach in there and unplug the speedometer possibly i don't think i'm going to get my my hands in there or my forearm past it through that hole but if we have to we'll we'll do what we got to do i'll see what uh how hard the speedometer is to unhook on this yeah i've got the screws out but she just does not want to move I mean, that's, I'm yarding on that pretty good, too. That speedometer cable's holding it. I can feel it being pulled through the, yeah, being pulled through the firewall. Another thing a guy could do, I'm not sure how secure that speedometer cable is. You could disconnect it from the, trans, from the transfer case and then pull some slack this way so you could get at it. But I think... We'll try and go in through the speaker through the speaker hole and see if I can get my my fat fingers in there and disconnect that speedometer cable. Be back in a minute. Well, the grill cover just pops off. It's just some plastic clips. Just a little uh, pocket screwdriver pops it out, and my speaker was only held in with one screw. So now I'm going to try and reach in there and disconnect that speedometer cable. That hole isn't that big, and I got a pretty good sized forearm. So we'll see if I can get my fat fingers in there. Well, I'll tell you to get to this point. Good times were had by all. Reaching through there, I can't. I'm not a contortionist. There's no way. You'd have to be rubber man to get in there and do that. And. The speedometer cable itself um, really does not have, like a lot of speedometer cables I've worked on before, there was like a clip, you know, you just squeeze it and it pops off. This one you just kind of got to, you got to muscle it, it looks like. There's no clips, nothing's broken. No clips, nothing's broken. And I don't think I'm going to be able to do this with one hand while you're holding on here, but I'll try. Let me see if I can do it with this hand. No, I'm going to have to get tough with it. I'll get it off and we'll be back in a second. Three electrical connectors. I'm sorry, one here on the side. One here and one over here. And they're a bear to get to as well. So what I had to do to get to this point was disconnect the speedometer from the transfer case and feed all the slack up over the top of the engine to the firewall, to the hole in the firewall. And I pulled the grommet out of the firewall too, in case I needed to pull this cable out. It pops in and out pretty easy. So getting these out was not easy. I had to use a little pocket screwdriver. I had to use a little pocket screwdriver to 
to pry them while I held the clip. One on each, you know, just pry a little bit on each side. I mean, I don't think those things have been out of there since this thing was put together. If it has, I, I don't know. So we'll take a look here, see what the speedometer drive looks like. I forgot to tell you one thing is I lowered the I lowered the steering column. There's a bolt on this side and there's a bolt on that side. I didn't take them out all the way, I just lowered it down and it gave me that it gave me that half inch or three quarters of an inch right there. So I could pull the cluster past this um, multifunction switch. Multifunction switch. And the hazard switch pops out. Now, I don't know if I did this or not, but it looks like there's a little clip on this side that moves, and it looks like this side might be broken. But it pops in and out of there pretty easy now, so it's good enough. So here's what the speedometer looks like. There is no clips. You know that you can squeeze they're just held on there by tension and it takes quite a bit of force to get it off of there and i don't see anything wrong here wish i had somebody here i could put a drill on that cable and then here is the the speedometer drive and i really don't see anything wrong in there i mean it, it looks square i don't know if you can see that let's I don't want to put too much light on it and wash you out. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get light in there. It's a square drive still. And I've, I've tried pulling this cable out more, right? So I could check the fitment of that into the... Right, tried pulling this out more to see if I could check the fitment into the speedometer. But, now let me see if I can do this with one hand. This will be a, a monkey trick. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick the screwdriver in the back back here. See, I already can see the needle moving. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with the speedometer itself. That's what I was really worried about. So the other worry now is the gear in the transfer case or this cable. And I think to check this cable, I put a pair of, I'm going to need somebody else possibly. So I can put a pair of needle nose vice grips on that to hold it and have somebody down below turning the cable under the vehicle or I could turn it with the vice grips and they could be holding it down there with a pair of pliers the drive on the transfer case is round with a like an indexing um, raised piece that slides into the um, speedometer drive gear that goes into the transfer case I'll uh, try and figure out what I'm going to do here I need to check that cable before I go any further. I need to know if that cable's okay. And to get this cluster out is a pain in the butt. So I'll be back in a few minutes. So I'm 100% sure it's the speedometer cable. Um, I tried doing it by myself. I put a pair of needle nose vice grips on this. And then I went down below and spun it. And it felt like it spun two or three times and then it stopped turning. So I'm wondering, I was wondering if I was binding it, binding the, winding the cable up, and then when I let go to get another grip, it turned back. So I couldn't tell. So I called my neighbor, and he was home, and he came over, and I went down below, and he was here, and I put the cable back in its natural position, rerouted it where it should be, and <clears throat> I had him watch this up here with the light which I should have on for you right now, because like a big dorkopotamus, I don't. So 
So I got the, I got my neighbor and he um, came here and he actually put his fingers on it and held it to make sure it didn't turn. And I went down below with those needle nose pliers and I spun that cable around in a circle like 300 times. Is that a screw? Did I just find a screw? The heck is that? Oh, I see. Came out of over there. So there's two teats on the on the speedometer and they sit in those rubber grommets and that was one of them had fallen out. The other one's still there, so we're safe. Well, I'm glad I looked in there closer. So I'm going to have to get a speedometer cable. I'm 100% sure it's speedometer cable. So uh, I think I lucked out. It wasn't the gauge or the drive gear in the transfer case. It could still be the drive gear in the transfer case. But I'm wondering while I got this out if I should get some LEDs for this. And I know these things have these green these green covers on them. I think they come off. They feel like rubber. Yeah, I think they come off. I think the green, these will just slide on new bulbs. But I'm wondering if LEDs would not be in play, it would be in the, the works for this. If it wouldn't be a bad idea, at least for the backlighting anyway. I don't know if I want LEDs for all of the warning lights, but it, it could be. Might not be a bad thing. I'll uh, I'll go see what, oh, if I can get a, yeah, see if I want to change these into LEDs too. I don't know. Sorry about the crappy camera work. I'm not used to this like action camera thing. The Go The GoPro knockoff. So, I am going to go look on Rock Auto, but I would, I would prefer to have the cable today, so I might have to call the local parts store and pay the extra money if they have it or if they can get it today or maybe tomorrow. I'll uh, be back when I get the cable. I don't think I want to put this back together until I have the cable. Well, I got the uh, lens cover off of the gauge cluster. I thought it was pretty clean, you know, when it was in the vehicle, but, you know, it's fairly clean, but I'm going to see if I can't clean this up a little better. The glasses, the lens cover is not so bad, but I'm going to try and use uh, some canned air to get most of the dust off, and then I'll, I'll clean the rest of it somehow. I'll figure it out. Well, I've got the, the uh, backlighting for the gauges out, and these bulbs are not removable out of these sockets. I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera very well, but you see that little wire? That's tucked in between that piece of metal and the outside plastic housing. They did that for whatever reason, I don't know. Normally these would be a socket where you just push the bulb in. You just push the bulb in. Um, I looked online and all of the ones I found, these are PC, I think 194s is what they're called. Yeah, PC 194. You can see it written right there on that. PC 194. Um, the local parts store um, had... Had only one local parts store had them, and when I looked online, everything I found online, the um, these teats where it uh, goes into the circuit board are 90 degrees to the contacts, and if you look at that, that's not going to work when you put this in here. When I put this in here, now if that was 90 degrees to where those teats are. We're going to be off of the pad, especially on this one. It's going to be up in here. It's going to be close to here. Oh, look at this one. Yeah, if it was 90 degrees, it wouldn't even be on the 
onto the um, pad, the contact surface of the printed mat. It's not really a circuit board. So I couldn't get, I couldn't find anything I felt confident with, and I went to the parts store and they had these. But the problem with these is these um, contacts were pointed up really high and they're super sharp. And when I was at the parts store, I took the gauge cluster down there and I tried putting one in and it kind of dented the, almost cut that, almost cut that mat. So what I think I'm going to do, some of these contacts are pretty dirty on this and that could be why the bulbs weren't working exactly right. So I'm going to take some deoxit and a um, Q-tip and clean and I will put these in there and then I will check them one at a time with the um, uh, uh, voltmeter resistance. These two contacts right here, these two solder pads right here are test points for your lighting. Um, and you can follow these back. You know, one goes right to there and, and you follow this trace over and it goes right to there. So these two are your, these two contacts right here. Right, you can follow that one back around and over. These two contacts right here are your lighting. Now I'm not sure which one's positive and which one's negative. So if you're putting LEDs in, you're going to have to figure that out. And uh, service manual, pin out. They have that information for these connectors. And I would assume, I don't know why, but this one says ground. And that's part of that lighting circuit. So I'm assuming that this upper one right here is going to be your ground. And this uh, second one here is going to be your, your uh, voltage supply. So... All right, I'm going to do some cleaning and we'll come back and maybe we can test this with the um, power probe and see if our backlighting works perfectly like it should. Well, here's the new cable. And of course, it didn't come with the grommet on it. And look how small that hole is. And look how big that is. <sighs> the only thing I can figure is to wrap this with some tape. Thin layer of tape, because these edges are kind of sharp right here on these prongs. Um, and then put some soap on it, maybe make it slick. I, I'm, I don't know how it's going to fit, but it's, it needs a grommet. It should have a grommet. So I'll see what I can do here. If I can get it on, I'll show you. So the tape and soapy water came through. Well, not soapy water. Just pure Dawn soap right on it. I just coated the inside of this with the Dawn. Now it's on. I'll take the tape off and shove this back up through the dash. And then I'll route it the rest of the way through. Okay, I got the dash back in, got the screws in. I'll double check to make sure they're tight. Uh, we got to put the trim on. Yeah, I'm going to put that basil, the, the trim around the um, gauges before I tighten up that steering column. I might even put the, I might even put this upper cover on before then. I don't know. We'll see. But we'll go take a look. <coughs> You've seen the new speedometer cable had metal prongs. So there it is. The grommet's installed in the wall here. The grommet's installed. She's back where I found it. I don't particularly like the routing of it. But it is what it is. And I'm wondering if there's a... See, it's awful tight right here to there. And I'm wondering if there's a, um, if this is not a two-wheel drive. I don't know how long the transmission is in the two-wheel drive compared to the four-wheel drive. But the two-wheel drive would go into the tail shaft of the transmission. And this one's a four-wheel drive, so it goes into the transfer case. So I'm not 100% sure. I mean, she's, I mean, she's tight. I pulled it right out of that clip over there. 
I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll put some. I pulled it right out of that clip. I'm not sure about the routing if it's, I think if it was, you know, on this side of that wiring harness, it would be right over the top of the distributor and that doesn't seem right. So I'm not 100% sure here. <clears throat> the service manual doesn't show the routing. And in step one, it says disconnect it from the heater um, core housing. This, the heater core housing is on this side of the car. And the cable, when I found it, went through over there. So I'm not 100% sure. And you can see it's really tight against the firewall there. So I'm not, as long as it works, that's all that matters to me, is that it works. So the routing looks good underneath. So I guess I'll get her back together and uh, we'll finish whatever else we need here on the, on the car ramps. And we need to take it for a test drive to make sure that that, uh, speedometer works but I'm sure it's going to so I will get some footage of it driving down the road with it working and if there's oh, any noise the or problem from O'Reilly's and it's uh the brand is Pioneer so I don't know what brand that is who makes it Pioneer may make their own I'm sure it's made in the land of China Well, there's the cable plugged in, connected. There's the clip that sits in there with the transmission um, or transfer case cross member and a ground wire there on that bolt. And this is a vent tube running next to it, which I think should be extended a little bit because it looks like it ends right there. I'm not sure what's going on there, but I'll, I'll take care of it. And that one goes up to the transmission. And then there's a clip on the bottom of the of the floor pan right there for the speedometer cable. And I zip tied the breather to the speedometer cable. I didn't get it tight. And then there's I found some slack so it's not sitting really super tight against that firewall anymore. Might be able to go up top and and rearrange things so it isn't so fiddlestick tight up there too. Um, I will give you a piece of advice when you're zip tying on a speedometer cable don't zip tie it down super tight that's all it's just a my friendly piece of advice that's all okay so that's the speedometer install we'll get up there in the engine bay and see if we can get some more room yeah we get a little bit more room here it's back in that it's back in that um clip there sorry about the shaky camera work But it seems like it's it's routed a lot better. Let's see if we can get some more room on the other side. If we need to get more room here or not. I think it's probably okay the way it is. Maybe not such a big turn. Not such a big curve coming into the firewall probably would be a good a good move. So I can pull some of that slack this way. Yeah, I like that. Away from that. Not rubbing on that. It's free. I would like it down more, but That's where the old one was clipped. Yeah, I don't see room back there for it. <coughs> Pardon me. So, yeah, that's gray connectors back there under that bracket. So that's just got to be where it's got to go. I'm okay with it. As long as it works, that's what matters. All right, I'll get the dash back together and I'll show you what it looks like. And we'll see if the dash lights work. I tried with the power probe. 
I just couldn't film it I'm by myself. So I just could not get in a position where we could film it real easily. So put the speaker back in, put the basil around the put the basil around the gauges and uh, double check those screws again make sure everything's tight and start putting the interior back together i'll be back so evening time i wanted to come out and check the show you the gauges lighting up is it even showing up on the camera no <laughs> oh man they are awful green is that all the way up on high? So they do adjust. But they're all working. If this doesn't turn out very very well, I'll go and get um, my cell phone. Actually, it's in my pocket. Maybe I'll just film it with my cell phone real quick. I know it does a good job.